everyone. Thanks so much for joining Ecom Unfiltered. I'm your host, Katie. Um, today, super excited because we actually have an 8Fit customer. His name is Nathan, and he is one of the founders of Taurus Pet. Uh, so super excited to have you here today and learn more about your business. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. I really appreciate it. Yeah, excited to dive in and have a fun uh, conversation on e-commerce. <laughs> so right. uh, I would love to just kind of dive in with like an introduction. Tell us about yourself and how you got started. Okay, so um, we were involved in a uh, business in New Zealand, which you can probably tell from my accent, um, which was focused on pet products, pet hydration in particular with the Taurus pet range. And that business had a few moments, as it were, so we decided to split it off and um, give it a life of its own, and hence Taurus Pet. And the focus is pr- pretty primarily hydration products for pets, nothing else. Essentially, the first uh, approach was very much around, down the distributor route, and that was because we were in New Zealand, we were remote from uh, major markets, Mm-hmm. Uh, it was very hard to press the flesh and get to know people and create relationships. And also the shipping costs and the, and the like were, were troublesome for management and the like. So we decided just to go straight to e-commerce. And then COVID came along, in which we'd, we'd really just set up this business um, a little bit prior to that. So we got the, um, the kick in the posterior to move into e-commerce from that as well. And um, it also allowed us to reduce the the um, costs so uh, along the food chain, as it were, and try to keep prices down when there was upward pressure in pricing so that customers would benefit. That's it in a awesome. very large nutshell. <laughs> yeah, we'll get kind of more granular, but that's awesome. Um, and so for those who don't know, Taurus Pet is, uh, we'll dive into it more, but it is essentially, mm-hmm. like you said, a hydration option for your dog. Um, so I'd love to kind of dive into the early days, maybe hurdles that you kind of faced, maybe specifically in the pet industry. Yeah. So again, um, I guess one of the major ones I, I've touched on, which was being remote from the main, having attended the trade shows and the like that, you know, are, are great and particularly in the U.S., um, they were hard to get to, particularly when little old New Zealand was locked down so hard as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the first thing. So building and establishing relationships was was challenging. And then from there, because we are our own product, we, we don't just we don't buy from someone else. This is a proprietary product of Taurus Pet. So we have the IP, we own the tooling, um, and we therefore have to manufacture for what the market requires. We can't just sort of um, say to a factory wherever, uh, likely China, um, Mm -hmm. we'd like X number of those and Y number of those, knowing that they were manufacturing in bulk. We have to do the manufacturing in bulk based on our forecast. The manufacturing takes time. So there was those sorts of challenges, and that's where it fed into cash flow management, um, which we all experience when we're setting up businesses Things take longer, they cost more than we all expect. And on top of that, you know, you're impatient and you want to get going and you're excited. So that's where the eight fig side came in, frankly, and really helped us. We, um, we're a, what they call a mom and pop business. Um, we're very tight in what we um, bring on as resource. And um, eight figs ability or willingness to partner with us when we're not, I guess, a traditional Amazon seller but we we sell on amazon but we are manufacturing our own products and that becomes a more cash flow challenging um uh issue because we have to fill our warehouses we have to fill our channel warehouses we can't and they have to be in large production runs in order to satisfy uh factory requirements and to get some economies of scale as well so they are probably our biggest thing and the last thing would be around marketing um well, I'm sure we will talk about the products themselves in a minute, but one of the main issues was that we have a unique product that does fit into the watering slash hydration um, uh, category, but it, it sits somewhat on its own and there aren't any other players in there. So we have to sell the uniqueness and the utility of our product um, to the market without riding on the back of marketing that may be pre-existing. So 
They were the definitely. major ones. And they weren't small issues. Yeah, those are big issues. Those are definitely <laughs> a lot of the hurdles I hear from, you know, I meet with a lot of founders and they seem to have the similar kind of starting pain points and, and things to kind of yeah. jump over. So, um, cool. Yeah. And thanks for that little like eight fig plug. We didn't ask you to do that, but we definitely no, appreciate a good it's little. <laughs> it's for real. Awesome. When you've got to front up with a significant amount of inventory and you've had to do pay for your own tooling, which mm-hmm. is, you know, a lot of money with big steel tools to make these things, having a yeah. partner on board to cash flow the roll on is fantastic. Oh, well, we appreciate that. And we're glad we could help you out. <laughs> um, so you mentioned like diving in a little bit more about the products. So I definitely want to hear, um, you know, your website mentions the science behind them and antimicrobial. I hope I'm saying that word correctly. Um, so yeah. I would love to just learn everything about the products. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got, I'll, I don't know if you can see this, but yeah, totally. this, this is, this is, the one of the key products which is it's a water bowl and but rather than it being a water bowl where you just fill it up with water the water this one's actually full and it's got two liters which i think is half a gallon of of water inside it and i can tip it over my head and no water will come out except for that one little drip so <laughs> um, maybe essentially, one little drip. <laughs> uh, so basically it's filled with water and when you want the uh, your pet to drink, um, it will. You turn the knob to flow, and the water flows into the well, which is a bit hard to see on the camera. But it's um, it fills up just to approximately an inch deep, and that and it stops there. So it's gravity fed. There's no technology in it in, in terms of electronics or whatever. You don't need a power source, so it means you can take it anywhere. So essentially, what we've got is a portable. A reservoir of water which is also filtered so you buy little filters and they their water runs through the filters and they let each of those last for a month um, and you buy uh, and it locks again you put the knob back in and it locks again and then you can buy refill packs of six filters so you've since you've got a half a year of filtration that's a active carbon filter and then we've got which is touching on what you raised, antimicrobial infused filters as well. So there's two levels of filtration and they do genuinely do different things. Um, Active carbon is a very, very common um, uh, material or mineral that's used in cleaning, including medical equipment uh, for human use. Uh, It's totally non-toxic for animals. Um, People are even uh, given it to eat at times. Um, to clean out issues in the gut. So it's very, very safe for pets, but it takes the microbes and the like out of, and even odors that might put a a pet off drinking, out of the water. The antimicrobial (laughs) goes to the next level where it takes out um, aspects of of toxins in, in the water, metallics and things like that. And it also, because we know our pets, you know, they'll go and dig in the garden, they'll come back and they'll... um, Uh, eat a bit of food and then they slobber all over their water bowl or what have you. The antimicrobials actually help with protecting the water when it's sort of sitting during the day. Notwithstanding that the water is actually stored inside the walls of the bowl and only releases when the the pet wants to drink anyway. On top of that, we've put antimicrobial infused into the actual polypropylene during the manufacturing process. So that again gives it a different um, level of protection if it's just sitting outside. Um, obviously you need to clean water bowls and food bowls just as we do ourselves. Um, so there is a, you know, there's a cleaning regime, but these things really do help in terms of um, the health and well-being and encouraging a pet to be hydrated. And you can use them in the car so it won't spill. Um, you can turn it to lock, put it in the car, turn it back on and the water will flow. You can take it to the park, you can put it in a bag, take it on a hike. The water's with you. You don't have to find the water source. And that's one of the beautiful things about it and makes it very, very popular. Not to mention that they're, they're, they look pretty flash and um, people like them from a design perspective as well. So that's Um, uh, that's essentially what we've got. Um, It comes in a two litre and there's also a little one litre bowl, which I can show you as well. This is designed specifically for cats and small puppies. Um, Again, that takes a quarter of a litre 
and it allows the this one was designed actually to accommodate the whiskers of a cat so if it drinks oh, sideways cool. the, the cat's whiskers won't touch and annoy the the cat there um, <laughs> smart again yeah, much smaller and you can literally just take that down to a cafe put it on the floor with you and the dog can sit there and have a drink while you're having your coffee or whatever you Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I'm sold because I have two dogs, um, a Great Dane and a Golden Retriever. So when you mentioned being out in the yard and then they come in and then their bowl gets all funky. So um, sold. (laughs) Sounds like I need one. (laughs) We have one here in the eighth. Sorry. I'm sorry. Go. No, go ahead. (laughs) Those big big dogs will also find it very hard to tip over. It's it's a hefty piece of um, product Uh and that has been designed that way. And that's why when, you know, they're not cheap, but they last. And even today, we had someone saying, um, I've had mine for six years. Um, have you got a new cap for it? Because they'd lost a cap or the dog had done something, run away with a cap or something like that. <laughs> so they're very robust. And, um, w- and we have repeat purchases because of that. They last. People give them as gifts and things, which is great as well. That's amazing. Yeah, we have one here in the eight fig offices and uh, sometimes we'll bring our dogs in. So we definitely utilize the tourist bowls uh, here in the office. We love them. Uh, They're Mm -hmm. awesome. So it seems like a pretty unique, you know, product. Is there anyone else like on the market who's creating something like this or are you guys kind of it? Not that we're aware of. And um, the um, the product is design patented. Um, mm-hmm. so hopefully we've got a little bit of protection there. Um, and, um, but where it really sits is between a basic bowl and a fountain. So in that space in itself, it's a little bit, it, it's got a little unique niche by itself. Um, and no one else has really, I mean, there are definitely portable bowls, but usually it's a, um, a fold down bowl or something. You've got to find the water source, not one that takes, it's, it's reservoir of water with you, with you. Was so there it's like, got real points of difference. Yeah. Did you go through a lot of different prototypes? How did you kind of fi- like decide on the final design? Um, yeah, there were there were quite a few prototypes. Um, again, there was uh, around the internal mechanisms was one of the majors where the water had to flow correctly through the filtration system. Mm-hmm. Um and obviously not, it had to be lockable. So that filtration system had to lock so no more water could come through so you could take it with you. So there was a little a fair amount of trial and error in there. But once the design was, was really sorted, um, then the ability to make the smaller one um, flowed on, excuse the pun, but flowed on from there. Um, and that was that one was a little bit easier, allowing though for different um, pet you know, the whiskers and, and smaller sized uh, animals and things. That's smart. It sounds like you put a lot of thought into this product. So everyone listening, please go buy one because this sounds like an awesome product. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, I'm, cool. <laughs> I'm going to kind of switch gears a little bit more into like marketing, e-commerce side of things yeah. um, and the sort of like the business side of things, if you will. But uh, so I saw you launch your store on Shopify. You mentioned you sell on Amazon. Um would love for someone who's listening, maybe if you have advice on just kind of setting up your store on Shopify or getting started on Amazon, like what advice you may have um, okay. for that person. Okay. Shopify, we found, um, look, we're not we're not highly technical people. We're, we're um, very open about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we like to build little business, small businesses and to market and to sell product. Um so for us, the technology side is a tool rather than, let's say, a love. Um, yep. Shopify, we found, was a tool that for us as um, tech Luddites could actually understand and work on ourselves to a very large degree. It was simple, but it also gave us the flexibility to add apps that we needed as the business evolved and we had new ideas switch them off if they weren't as um, positive outcome or we found a better one. Um, and also to engage experts who were familiar and work in um, with, with Shopify and other platforms on a very cost-effective basis rather than having to run a technology person on a, on a full-time. And I think that's one of our main focuses. We try not to engage 
um, uh, or, or bring on board anything that's going to be a burden in terms of cost on the business that essentially you then have to sell a heck of a lot more product to cover. So Shopify in that respect for us was was excellent. In, t- in terms of uh, integrating it also with back-end warehousing, it was, it was pretty simple. Um, admittedly, again, yeah, not being the tech people, we, we had their warehouses do that. But just being able to give them access and the flexibility to, to the platform was really, really good. In terms of Amazon, uh, we have had varying experiences with Amazon, to be perfectly honest. Um, we find aspects of how they operate to be quite challenging. Um, but you have to be there. Um, at the you end of the day, be. you can talk all you like about the ethics of it and, and how they operate and how you feel that you're treated and things like that. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a rough and tumble world out there and you, you need to be able to um, maybe yell and scream at your screen a little bit and then get back onto it and refocus and, and work with them. So Amazon is, a, is definitely a key for us. The one thing I would say is that one and one probably one thing we didn't understand with Amazon is that it really is quite a, a full-on role uh, or can be to operate it, monitor what's going on, checking your advertising, this, that and the other. And we probably tried to do too many Amazon stores in different territories too quickly, um, thinking that we had a, a product that we felt had proven demand and 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 it would just take off. Um, right. You got to be you got to be all hands on with Amazon, yeah, and be prepared. Uh, so, would you say? I mean, I probably already know the answer, but do you? Would you say you know your sales mostly come from your Amazon storefront or from your D 2 C Shopify site? Um, more come from Amazon, definitely. Um, but what I'd add is that our we we are also on Vendor Central in Europe, okay. so in the UK, and those we know that's not for everyone. But for us, those ones actually proved the value of Amazon and, and helped us willing to to persevere on the US one, which was you know boxing us around the head for a while. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's um, the, the most of our sales do come from Amazon at the moment, but we've also broadened now to different platforms, which we can run the sales through Shopify, which is another value add from, from the Shopify perspective. We can upload our data for sales via Walmart, um, Target Plus and others. Oh, nice. And we have the customer data whether it be wholesale or retail, actually showing in Shopify, which is thankfully viewable in one one screen. That's awesome. So that kind of leads me to my next question, um, marketing. How are you, you know, what have you done that maybe didn't work and what are you doing that is working? Okay. Um, I think we're still, we're still finding our feet um, and finding out what works and what doesn't. And from, from our experience, what works one week may not work the next. So yeah. um, the different cultures of different markets, the different seasonalities and things like that definitely play a big part. And we admit that we, again, maybe it's because we're, we're not, as I haven't been au fait with the American market and the culture of it, it's probably taken us a little bit longer to, to learn where the best, mm-hmm. what the best ways are. However, what we've most recently gotten to is that we have to watch our dollars very, very carefully because everyone's trying to entice you to spend more on marketing and right. they talk about the ROAS and the ACOS and all of that sort of thing. And that's great. But when people are trying to, when platforms are trying to sell you eyeballs, that's fantastic. But those eyeballs and impressions don't always lead to sales. So you right. can be spending a lot of money on clicks and getting nowhere with some and less with others, less with different uh, marketing strategies or campaigns or what have you. So we've sort of, to be honest, great believers now in sort of varying it a bit and trying to get as tightly to the who we think our target market is 
uh, as possible because the spend can really get away from you relative to what you're bringing in. And for us, you know, again, it's a business, it's, it's all ROI at the end of the day. If you spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on an advertising campaign over a month or two, and you get few sales, that's quite a lot to make back on. You know, that's a lot more to make back uh, from the margins that we will make these days. Yeah, definitely. Um, and just like being in marketing for almost eight, nine years now, just it's, sometimes it's trial error, just trying to just get in front of the right people and the right customers. So sounds like you're doing all the right things to kind of figure out what works best doing for you. Best. Not <laughs> yeah. easy. Not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. And I feel like the pet industry is like pretty saturated and just, I mean, your category is kind of specific, but I mean, there's other, I'm sure there's other people you consider competitors out there. So it's just kind of figuring out what's right for you and, um, yeah. you know, where your customers are hanging out. <laughs> exactly. Cool. And influences for us, influences, um, can be good as well. Uh, but again, we, we're not in the practice of saying, here's a large sum of money for um, hopeful sales. We, we try to engage with influencers who are, I guess, more modest in their outlooks, and, um, but it might be attached to smaller or might have smaller number of followers, but who are probably more effective because they've got a closer knit group. And that's the sort of thing we try to do a little bit more as well. That ebbs and wanes a bit because, of course, once they're purchased and once the influence is done there, but where to next for them? So you've got to think of the next thing pretty quickly. Yeah. So so you're using influencer marketing right now like pretty heavily or? Uh, we're just trying to ramp it up a bit more, particularly um, On prior to TikTok the um, or... festive season. Yeah, TikTok. Um, and um, my um, lovely wife is in charge of that side of it. So... Um, I, I won't pretend to understand even if she's doing day to day. <laughs> That's um, totally fine. Not everyone's a marketer, so. No, no. You sound like you but, got the um, science, though. You got the science down. She's got the marketing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We 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 look. It's we're a small team. Clearly, we're a, we're yeah. a family business, and um, everyone is, or the two of us, and a few others have uh, the skill sets that bring it all together. Love it. Um, so how do you see the pet industry evolving, maybe specifically in your category? At times it's hard, it's hard to know. Um, usually, you know, as we all know, when things get uh, a bit saturated, as you said, mm-hmm. there's a bit of amalgamation or mergers or, or people fall by the wayside. Um, there's probably, I would imagine, there'll be a bit of that, um, particularly if margins start to get squeezed and um, that's one of the things again with Amazon as lovely as they are they are they're great at finding different ways to squeeze a little bit more out of you so yeah um, that's um, that's one thing I can I can definitely see happening Um, whether there's more evolution in the technology side I'm not sure Um, there are already uh, you know feeders that are tech um, based and some watering our products as well. Um, most of the feedback I get is, well, a water bowl is a water bowl. And, um, you know, people, from what I gather, seem to want to keep it more simple, which is what we try to do, notwithstanding the functionality that we do have. So whether there's something out there technologically that's going to um, change things, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. I mean, I love that your product is, I feel like it's like high tech, but like you said, there's no technology in it. And it just seems like, I don't know, as a consumer, as someone who has dogs, I would definitely go for a product like yours than some fancy thing that I have to like click a bunch of buttons or set some sort of schedule. And it's like super fancy, you know what I mean? So there's definitely, there's customers out there who probably prefer that over, you know, the high tech type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our approach was very much, well, you can't take a, a, a technology-based water bowl in the car, well, not easily. No. You no. can't <laughs> take it hiking or walking. And the other thing is that, you know, pets need water. We know from a medical perspective, they really, hydration is key. Yeah. So what happens if the power goes out at home yeah. or what have you, and they, or it just there's just a malfunction they can't access right. their water. It's uh, they're real. They're real 
challenges. And we know from people who were building feeders in the past that one of their early stages was overcoming that, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. You know, is my dog, am I going to come home? The thing didn't work, the dog's hungry or, or thirsty. Yeah. Anyway, that's, where, that's why we are where we are. I love it. Perfect. Um, okay, so you touched on, you know, that you're doing some influencer marketing, but if you had to pick like one celebrity or influencer to endorse your products and really promote them on like social, who would you want to pick? Instinctively, Mark Wahlberg. Okay, love that. Why? Because <laughs> he's um, that, I said that's probably a little bit different than... It's no, not, I love it's it. Not, it's not Kim Kardashian. Nah. Although, she, to be fair, she'd probably get a lot of sales. Um, <laughs> True. I think... Well, from what I gather, he is a dog lover and he's got his own um, Pomeranian, I think it is, um, uh, and it's got its own Instagram page as well. So that shows <laughs> someone who actually does love his dog, love love pets. And mm -hmm. I like the fact that the guy is real, uh, straightforward, simple, um, tells it as it is, and that's our product. I was going to say, is that how would you just is that how you describe your product? Is just straightforward. Yep. Love it. I would buy something if Mark Wahlberg was <laughs> promoting it. <laughs> Love yeah. it. And, and he's a great actor, but apart from that. Yeah, apart from that, I mean, if you like dogs, you tr I trust you in my book. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, yeah. cool. So, okay, another kind of fun question. I always ask this on the podcast, but what's like the funniest or craziest thing you've purchased from a social media ad? Okay. Or like have almost purchased? <laughs> What have I almost purchased? I'm, I have to admit, this is not good on an e-commerce uh, podcast, but I'm not the big purchaser in the house. The way. But I can tell <laughs> you that if you want to know anything that involves a bucket, a mop, cleaning, um, something to keep the car clean of all different shapes and sizes, I've got the person for you, and she's my wife. <laughs> so she laughs about it as well it's all out there so um definitely uh i think as a household we we buy a lot of practical things rather than crazy things yeah and just right. try to um find things that again are a bit different to what you might find in the main store that actually give it to you at a reasonable price and um and have yeah. and with some quality as well that's a smart answer so I've, I've heard an array of things and like for me, I see an ad and I'm like, I don't need that, but it just looks fun and I want to get it. Um, so yeah. I definitely need to be better about being more practical <laughs> with my purchases sometimes. Oh, look, and social media recent. will get you. I mean, the ad will hit you a hundred times and you're like, all right, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> so Yeah, I think the thing I'm most tempted at is probably at, um, on social media is travel. They're the things that tweak my interest most, but they're hardly travel? crazy travel. Traveling. I don't know if I've heard. I don't know. Travel, what travel. Getting on an airplane. Travel. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. sorry. It's the accent. <laughs> yeah. So Same. That, travel gets that me too. Things <laughs> that I look at and get bombarded with, but of course, they're not crazy and they're not the everyday purchase. Yeah, totally. I travel a lot, so those those ads work for me too. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, so I'd love to hear, you know, before we wrap up, kind of. Uh, your future plans or maybe just some goals you have and kind of where you want to see yourself in the next couple of years with Taurus. Okay. So we have dabbled with diverging a little bit. And as I said before, we want to stick with hydration. We think it's a big space, but we think hydration has got a lot more to it than just a bowl and water and even the filtration. So we're going to add a greater array of what we call consumables, as it were, things that can help with um the health of a of a pet through through its hydration, and that That's cool. comes down to things like dental care and other health support um, mm -hmm. solutions that we've actually got in the in the pipeline at the moment, and hope to have out in uh, Q one of next year. All going well, um, so that's that's essentially our our main goal is to broaden the the number of ways that you can utilize a Taurus water bowl to the benefit of your pet's health. That's the main thing. In terms of commercials, we want to grow. We want to get more channels if we can, preferably e-commerce. Uh, particularly in the US, we want to. We know it's a huge market. We want to grow more and more. 
And we're also conscious that one day, um, you know, maybe there is a partnership or a merge or what have you to be achieved. I mean, we're all trying to build businesses and be successful. So, um, yeah. but, you know, step by step and with some integrity and honesty and all of that stuff. So we'll see where it goes. Love that. Lots of lofty goals, but I think it sounds like you can achieve them and you got a good head on your shoulders. So I wish nothing but the best for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so before we wrap up, I would just love if you could share um, one where everyone could shop your products. I know we talked about it a little bit. And then also where they can follow along on social media or um, okay. that kind of thing. Yeah. So going backwards, social media, we're, we're Taurus Pet on Instagram, Pinterest, um, Facebook and the like. Um, and TikTok is Taurus Pet Official. Okay. Uh, yeah, Taurus Pet Official. Um, I'll put all these in the show notes too so everyone can okay. follow. Um, yeah. And in terms of purchasing in the States in particular, there we're now, like I say, Target Plus, Walmart, um, Amazon, uh, our website, um, Coles, eBay. It's all of those platforms have Taurus products on them. And obviously, we'd love to have more and more users of the product because we we believe in it. We think it's good for your for pets' health. And um, like I say, looks cool in the house. Awesome, amazing, Nathan. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a lot of fun, and loved learning more about Taurus. It's a great product, and I wish nothing but the best for you. Thank you, thank you for having wow. us again, and um, and for all of the support. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, this has been another episode of Ecom Unfiltered. I'm your host, Katie, and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm.